fact of the matter is most Americans own mutual funds but are completely unaware of some of the very important issues associated with them. I think there are a lot of issues with mutual funds that need to be shared with investors that they just don't realize. Most Americans invest in mutual funds. The most common way that Americans access the stock market is through these mutual funds. There are nearly 10,000 mutual funds available in the USA. 52% of Americans have some level of investment in the market, mostly in the form of mutual funds. Now, what is a mutual fund? A mutual fund is a lot like a, believe it or not, like a chicken wrap. It's a collection of individual investments wrapped up in one package. There might be um, a little bit of onion, there might be a little chicken, a little tomato, a little less. It's just one big wrapper and the ingredients inside are generally stocks. So the average stock mutual fund holds over 200 individual stocks. Now, while most Americans are gaining access to that market via mutual funds, what investors might not realize is that these mutual funds tend to underperform. In fact, in the last five years, something like 75% or more of large cap mutual funds have actually underperformed their benchmark. And this is not a new phenomenon. This has been going on for years and years, in fact, decades. Um, one of the main reasons is expenses. When you're talking mutual funds, you're talking expense ratios, sales charges, front end loads, deferred loads, transaction fees. The list goes on and on. And all mutual funds are different, but generally these fees are not very transparent. They're usually buried inside a document called a prospectus, um, which can be difficult to read. When you get a mutual fund, when you invest in a mutual fund, you are signing a piece of paper saying that you have read that prospectus and that you have read all 50 pages. And you have seen that buried inside that prospectus on page 27 are the fees. And of course you remember that. Um, but in practical purposes, the fees are generally not very transparent. So generally when you're talking about mutual funds, the issue of advisor level typically comes into the conversation. So as you go up, there's five levels of advisors. As you get into that upper tier of advisors, that level four or level five advisor, you're going to be getting a much wider, robust set of planning aspects that are you're getting for the services. Um, you're looking at social security planning, required minimum distribution planning, um, you're talking about Roth conversions, estate planning, and in many cases you're even talking about adding elements of long-term care and guaranteed income for life. Um, healthcare planning, that Medicare planning, um, that taxation that sometimes surprises retirees on Medicare can be hurtful and is part of an overall plan. So when you're talking about taxes, that level five advisor is actually doing your taxes. So just like most Americans don't realize that they're in mutual funds, they also don't realize that there are these different levels of advisors. And when you put these two unknowns together, you generally find out that they go hand in hand. Um, mutual funds are a level of one advisor's best friend. Um, and why might that be? Well, you first have to remember that mutual funds are managed by an outside third party, which are charging fees for that service. So you're talking level one advisor, he's initially picking maybe five or six mutual funds based on what the client needs at that time. But after that, it can become very easy, um, almost human nature, uh, to take over where this level one advisor, since they're actually not doing any of the heavy lifting with regards to the actual investment management, um, it can become very easy to lose focus or sight of that client portfolio. It's more or less a set it and forget it type of mentality. Uh, when we see this very often, uh, we're with a new client. They've walked in and we look at their current situation and ironically, it's essentially the same situation that they've been in since they first met with that level one advisor five, 10, even 20 years ago. What they have now, five or six mutual funds, is exactly the same thing they owned 10 years ago, five or six mutual funds. Um, that level one advisor is typically working for a national firm and is being compensated and graded not on the performance of his client's portfolios, but he's actually being judged by the quotas that he is or is not meeting 
and uh, how many sales that level one advisor is making. So when the investor learns this for the very first time, they often ask, well, if an outside company is actually managing my investments and I have basically the same five or six mutual funds that I owned 10 years ago, what is my advisor actually doing? Um, what is he or she doing for those additional fees that they are charging? And, and that's usually a pretty good question. Um, and then of course you get into the second derivative of the issue with the level one advisor, which is in most cases they have limited access. So again, there's over 10,000 mutual funds. Um, hidden down in the disclosures of their websites, you'll find, yes, we are going to give you mutual funds, but we have very limited access as to what we can give you. And then you continue to read and you understand about revenue, revenue sharing, which is essentially telling you, the client, that as a level one advisor working for a national firm, I'm going to have a conflict of interest. I'm going to have a financial incentive to pick the investments that are going to make my firm the most money and make me the most money. I'm going to predominantly promote the mutual fund strategies which are going to give us the most money. And that's right in the disclosures. Um, and I think that's a scary thing that people generally don't realize when they're working with a level one advisor and invested in mutual funds. So inevitably, I'm talking to somebody about mutual funds and the last question is always this. Well, if we're not going to invest in mutual funds, what should we invest in? And that answer can be individual stocks, individual bonds, um, these two alternatives are what level five advisors across America are doing for their clients. Um, individual stocks and bonds do not come associated with those outside third party fees um, because your advisor is the one handpicking those investments. And ETFs, which are similar to mutual funds, although generally have a lot less expenses and transaction fees, have been gaining momentum and traction for the last 10 years and are taking on trillions of dollars of new net assets as people who are educating themselves about mutual funds are slowly getting out of those mutual funds. And that's why we think that mutual funds should be considered for an investment portfolio, but perhaps some additional thought and process should go into perhaps looking at some alternatives such as stocks, bonds, and ETFs.